In this force tutorial, we're going to pattern a door like we said to. We're going to add a little bit of detail around a window and then a wooden feature that's custom to my design. These are just ideas that you can use and hopefully you can adapt to suit your own design ideas that you've come up with. Let's start with the part pattern. So it's part two and we want to pattern an extra set of doors alongside here. So to start with, we're going to go to the pattern tool, linear pattern at the top. Linear is just a straight line. The entities to pattern is asking you to select the part. So our part, if we hover over them, it's part two. Yours might be different depending on the order that you created them. So just hover over and see which highlights are in. So I'm going to click on part two. The direction of the pattern, and we want it coming this way. So you can click any line essentially going in that direction. So I'm going to click direction, and I want a line going that way. And that is now showing that my doors are going to come in that direction. The distance we're going to play about with. So I'm going to look at it from the top. I'm going to start the distance at about 1500 millimeters. So 1.5 meters or 1500 millimeters. Okay, and you can see they're not quite lining up very well. Change of view, like we did in the last tutorial, using the shaded box to shade it with hidden edges. So we can see where we want them to overlap. And if we keep moving that along, so if we try 1550, and you'll see how much it moves, and maybe 1600 could be the answer. Which also makes sense, which I should have thought. They're, they're the boxes that we drew, four 400s, which is 1600. So we're going to click tick, and we've got a set, a set there, a second set of bifold doors. So it looks a little bit better now having more of those created. What we're then going to do is add that detail around the window. So we're going to look at it from the right hand side for this. I'm going to change my view back to shaded and I'm going to click new sketch. The new sketch is going to go onto this surface and it's just going to be two rectangles. So it's going to be a wooden border around the window to help it look like it's got more of a position. So I'm going to copy that rectangle and then I'm going to do one slightly larger. Once you've done that, use the dimension tool again to make sure that going around the edge, the border is even all the way around. So we're just going to measure between the two lines using the dimension tool, and we're going to make it 80 millimeters. So quite a chunky trim. Okay, so measure between the two lines again, and 80 millimeters, and go around to do all four distances. So it's nice and even. That attention to detail is what makes a big difference come your final project. If you fail to, to add your dimensions, to make things symmetrical, to make them even, it shows in your final piece. And that's where your grade would be a little bit lower. The quality of your outcome would be a little bit lower. So we'll click, tick on the sketch, and we're going to extrude that object. And I can click onto them two rectangles that I've just drawn. We're just going to make them come out 30 millimeters, not too far, and it's going to be a new part. Okay, checking the arrows going in the correct direction. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to click tick. And you can see it's a new part because it's a different colour. So I'm going to make that look a little bit more like wood now. So right click on part, edit appearance, and I'm going to make it one of these shades. I think that's a bit too orangey. I want one of the more washed out tones. So I'm hoping that's going to look quite nice. There we go. So I've got my wooden effect window frame just around there. The final part of this tutorial then, I'm going to add my little wooden canopy. Hopefully it looks quite nice come the end. It's going to use the linear pattern tool again. So I'm just going to create one example and then pattern it along just for a quarter or so of my design. The end here is going to be where I do my sketch and the wood is going to extend off the roof and down this side here. So I'm going to create the sketch and look at it from the left hand side. It's essentially going to be two rectangles, so let's draw them in roughly to start with and then dimension them. I want them connected to the building, so it gives them a bit of strength, and then I want this pillar connected to that top rectangle. And when it gets that dotted line, I know I've come back down to the base. So watching out for when it's snapping to objects and watching out for the dotted lines will help you line everything up a bit more accurately. Let's add some dimensions in. So I'm going to make it a 250 millimeter wide piece of wood and the same on the pillar down here, 250 and 250, fairly straightforward. This then is going to protrude about three meters past the building, maybe two and a half. So if we make that 5,000 
that should look quite nice the height is already done for us so I'm happy with that as a piece of work so far I'm going to round some of the edges in a moment I'm going to click tick to finish that sketch and then the next step as we know is to extrude it to make it a 3d object I want to extrude both rectangles at the same time so I'm just going to click on sketch 7 okay the arrow is pointing towards me I want it to go back over the building so I'm going to click the other way and I'm going to make that a 30 millimeter thick piece of timber so we can see now it's starting to come together 30 millimeters looks a little bit thin I'm going to make it 40 a little bit more chunky and I'm going to make sure I've got new selected so it knows it's a new part and click tick on there the color obviously at the moment is just the random on shape blue so I'm going to change that in the appearance editor to my wooden tone that I selected and I'll click the tick I'm going to add a little round to the top two corners as a tiny little bit of detail and once that's done I'm going to create the pattern so I'm going to zoom in click the fillet tool or the round tool and click on that edge there that can then round at 150 millimeters and I'm going to do the same on this edge so you can see that I'm happy with those two rounds I'm now going to pattern that just to have 10 or so of those pieces along the same linear pattern al along the same rooftop as the doors went along so linear pattern tool entities to pattern selecting the part that I just created and the direction is any direction any line going in the in the direction that I want so I'm clicking on that line I want like I said around 10 of these and I can play about with the distance that I want them so to start with we'll go 300 and see how that looks um, I think either 10 is too many or 300 is not enough so we're going to change both we're going to go to 400 and we're going to take it down to 7 and we're going to see how that looks still gaps are a bit too close so let's make that 600 and see where, where we're at then we're actually going over quite a lot of the building now but I am happier with the look that I've got so far and I think I'm going to stick tick what you can see now is that we've got a few details and our architecture is actually starting to come together more as an architectural model good luck